Now, every year, Europe's motoring journalists get together to vote on their car of the year. And in the past, they've come up with some, quite frankly, amazing decisions. In 1979, the Chrysler Horizon was voted top car. And in 1975, the Simca came out on top. Even last year, there was controversy when the Renault Megane Scenic was voted top car over the likes of the Jaguar XK8, the Porsche Boxster, the 5 Series and the SLK. Well, this year, they've come up with a cracking decision, and it's this, the brand new Alfa Romeo 156. And this is our first chance here in Spain to look at and drive the car of the year. What the designers of the 156 have come up with here is a saloon that almost looks like a coupe. A quick first glance and you think, well, are there any rear doors on it? And how do you open them? Well, there are, and the handles are here. How about that for a neat idea? Absolutely fantastic. And there are pin sharp spotlights recessed into the front spoiler as well, which give a fantastic beam. And also these alloy wheels remind me of the telephone dial alloys that we saw on the Porsche 928 many years ago. What Alfa Romeo have done here with the 156 is go head to head against BMW's 3 Series and they've come up with a winner against the current 3 Series shape. Now whether that remains to be seen after the new 3 Series arrives this summer, well, we'll have to wait and see. Alfa Romeo's image was born out of and grew as a result of the appeal of its sport saloons. And with the Alfa 156, this heritage is enhanced by all those practical and reassuring values that are a feature of 21st century cars. It is new all over. It takes you into a new Alfa Romeo world where sportiness and motoring excellence coincide with the pleasure of comfort and the taste for driving in total safety. The engines in the Alfa range are real beauties. They're absolute goers. They get a choice of three, a 1.8 litre and 2 litre, the twin spark four cylinders, and the 2.5 litre V6. The car I'm in at the moment is the 2 litre twin spark, and it's an absolute beauty. But if you're a real fan of that 2.5, the V6 engine note, then that must be the car for you. The Alpha 156 offers a range of uncompromising engines, powerful and flexible in all capacities and in all versions. The engineering of the four-cylinder twin sparks are the best that modern technology has to offer. Four valves, twin spark ignition, variable valve timing, and finally, the new generation variable geometry intake system. And topping the range, we have a six-cylinder 2.5-litre offering 190 brake horsepower with a six-speed gearbox. The diesels also confirm an engine superiority that is typically Italian, but particularly Alfa. The four-cylinder 1.9-litre and the five-cylinder 2.4-litre offer Unijet electronic injection for the first time to generate performance worthy of an outstanding petrol engine. That's a fantastic view of the Costa del Sol. And how about this for a drop-dead gorgeous shape? This car would not be seen out of place on the catwalks of a top Italian fashion house. Now, the design of the 156 was in-house led by Walter De Silva and his team. And what they've come up with here is a beautifully shaped car. The curves and everything about it just looks fantastic. It's a touch of modernism with some grace and some elegancy as well. And this shield on the front is absolutely fantastic. You want to pull it off, strap it onto your arm, and go into battle. It's very reminiscent of some of Alpha's great pre-war cars. Now, Alpha have decided to price the 156 very aggressively. The 1.8 litre twin spark starts at 17 and a half thousand pounds, the two litre at just under 20, and 22 and a half thousand pounds for the 2.5 litre V6. 
Every car comes with a reasonable specification, including a sunroof, steel wheels, electric windows, and an alarm immobiliser. But the options list is also fairly long, and you do have to pay for extras like air conditioning on the 1.8 litre. The suspension is supple rather than firm and in my opinion the steering could be with being a little bit more precise. There's a tendency to oversteer on some tight corners. Now the 156 is based rather loosely on its Italian cousin the Fiat Bravo although it's much modified from that. It has a wishbone front suspension and a lengthened wheelbase to accommodate the 2.5 litre V6. Now, Peter, how important do you think it was to win the Car of the Year for the 156? We were absolutely delighted, very honoured to win it. Um, we do take Car of the Year as a, as a very serious and uh, important accolade. And uh, obviously it has um, a knock-on effect on, on potential customers because they can, they can see that from that um, it's not just their opinion, but it, their opinion is backed up by, by uh, people who are really in the know. So, yes, it was, a, it was an important point for us. And, and the fact that Alfa Romeo... Uh, has never won it before, um, just added to, the, um, added to the icing, should we say. Now for a non-mainstream car, it's, it's really quite an achievement, or, or would you say really that the 156 is the most mainstream Alfa ever? Well, th this, is, this begs the question, what, what is a mainstream car, doesn't it? Um, in, in terms of mass manufacturers, obviously, Alfa Romeo and its, and its models will always remain a niche brand. Um, with, with very obviously very sporting um, overtones, sporting elegance and so on. But uh, I would have to agree with you that, that um, 156 has been designed to be built in comparatively large numbers by Alfa Romeo standards. Uh, and I, I would emphasize by Alfa Romeo standards. I mean, it, it, the factory is currently gearing up to build, uh, to build 156 at a rate of over 100,000 per annum. Now, that's not very much by mainstream manufacturer standards, but by Alpha standards, yes, that's a considerable, considerable volume. What about the, the concern that some people have with the, the amount of Alpha dealerships around the country? Is that something that's going to be addressed? And well, it, 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 to some extent, it, it actually has been addressed already, uh, and, and we're continuing to work on that. We have something like 85 Alpha Romeo dealers throughout the, uh, the UK at the moment. And, uh, this has risen uh, consistently over the last three years from a very low base of around 40. So we've, we've, we've more or less doubled the size of the Alfa Romeo dealer network in, in, in three years. Now the interior in the 156 perhaps takes a little bit of getting used to. The sport seats in this particular model are very supportive and you get this extra cushion for the thighs as well, which is easy just to move in and out. One thing I don't like is this carbon fibre look around the centre console here. It is very cheap and plasticky. You can have the option of wood, but it's a similar sort of look, to be honest. The binnacles for the speedometer and the rev counter, those are rather quaint, but this ventilation system here looks like it was stuck on as an afterthought. Now, there's no doubt that Alfa Romeo have had its problems in the past few years. They've been through some lean times, and there's perhaps a perception, particularly in Britain, that finding a new Alfa Romeo and getting it serviced regularly is a problem. That's not the case. There are plenty of dealers around the UK for you to go to. But what Alfa Romeo have come up here with a new 156, and remember, European Car of the Year, it's a car that's going to take on those German competitors with ease and keep the Alfa flag flying for many years to come. Thank you.